Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Farming Simulator 15 on Old Ridge Farm. I backed up the John Deere here so that I wouldn't even have to tab the start of today's episode. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be getting rid of these mowers. We have no need for them anymore. Um, we hardly had a need for them in the first place, but... I haven't actually used them on this map, come to think of it. Um, yeah, we're gonna get rid of these. And we are going to... We don't have a loan. I was gonna say we're gonna pay back the loan with um, whatever we make out of this, but there's no loan to pay back. So... Uh, I have no idea what we're gonna do other than that. Um, I think the bales... The bales need to be picked up. I'm going to be picking up the bales, and um, <coughs> the hope is I will be getting a decent income from the crops, because we're going to be selling them off soon as well. Um, I've been testing, I haven't put any new mods in the game for a little while. Um, I am, of course, constantly checking for new mods that interest me, and uh, I'm trying not to overdo it with the John Deere's. All the good mods I've seen have been John Deere's, um, so I haven't really been getting them. Uh, what do we want to do now? We're gonna bring this guy back to the farm. I really possibly should have mowed that grass over there. Oh well. I'm gonna bring this guy back to the farm. And what we are going to do is we're going to pick up the auto stacker. Now you'll have noticed so far that I haven't used course play at all. That's essentially my own choice. <laughs> I could use it for literally everything on this map if I really wanted to. Uh, there's a part of me that kind of likes doing the, doing the work manually, to be honest. And, um, yeah, Yanis and Kosumi um, was saying that I should get um, a service vehicle so that I'm not constantly, well, I don't accidentally tab around. That's not going to happen because the tabbing isn't related to how far things are away. It's down to me having a habit of tabbing once I finished a job. Um, <laughs> and if you didn't see it, only MTX125. And I'm, I'm going out of memory today. Going by memory, I'm, I'm having a good day. Um, didn't sleep particularly well last night, but that hasn't stopped me from feeling good. <laughs> uh, only MTX125 was asking for tips and advice on starting your own let's play really the only advice I can give is invest it up front in a good quality microphone setup and it really stand to you um, recording software pick whatever you like the most whatever you know how to use um, I use OBS, Open Broadcasting Software, because that's well, Open Broadcaster Software, because that's free. Um, I do have a Fraps license as well, so I have Fraps. I have the free version of XSplit as well, and I just like OBS the most. Um, just my personal preference. It's got the nicest file sizes and doesn't lag the game horribly. Fraps does, because I've tried. Um, as well as that OBS lets me change my mic volume on the fly, essentially, and the game volume. Um, editing software, again, whatever you prefer. I use Sony Vegas. It's a bit picky if you want to use Sony Vegas. I use Vegas 11, it's an older version. It can be um, very, very picky about the file format. Um, for example, with OBS, I have two audio codecs I can use, and I know the general rule of YouTube is you never talk about how you record videos, but I was asked, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, there are two codecs with 
OBS, you have AAC and MP3 for audio. And I discovered, to my horror, and while I was trying to edit videos, that the AAC codec is the one you want to be using if you're using OBS. If you swap your audio codec to MP3, and you're using Vegas 11 for whatever reason, um, that was just the one I could get. I'm not going to say how I got it, but it's the one I could get. Um, if you're using Sony Vegas 11, it does not like the MP3 codec for audio on MP4 files. Um, AAC works perfectly, I would say. And really, setting up OBS for recording, quite simple. Um, getting it to work properly, <laughs> not so much. <coughs> um, it does take some tinkering and some fiddling, and um, you do need to get to know the program before you can really use it for recording. XSplit, a lot nicer. Um, you just set up your... You just tell it where you want the file to go, it'll record the file to that location. Um, and it is a bit more streamlined with file sizes. But I can't get because I have the free version. I can't get um, high frame rates and you know 1080p or whatever. I don't use them, but for the I'm hoping to upgrade my computer at some point during the year because the current one I have is now nearly four years old. Um, if you're interested, I have a GTX four. 50 graphics card with 2 gigabytes um, VRAM. I have 8 gigabytes of RAM and Intel i5 4250, I believe. Uh, that's been slightly overclocked by my motherboard, which is an Asus uh, Mini 8X. And that's running at 3.2 gigahertz. I also have a damn near full 2 terabyte hard drive. Which when I bought the computer I said, ah, I'll get 2 terabytes, it'll last me 5 years. I have done that again. I'm gonna drive around with this up. It's gonna cause a couple of issues, but it's up now, I'm only going over there, so it should be. No. Is it B to lower? B, B, X. How do I lower it? About unloading X. Um, you know, my computer isn't the newest, which is why you sometimes see these big spikes of um, frame rate drops. <coughs> That's something I can't really avoid, short of dumping the graphics down. And uh, to be honest, I've well, I've done what I can that in that aspect. I've dumped down the. Uh, anti-aliasing and that sort of stuff. I've dumped down the, the options I know I can dump down without a massive um, hit to the graphics themselves. So let's see if I can get this nice and lined up. That'll do. I just need to bring it forward so that they're not touching. And there we go. 16 bales in. Only a few more to go. Oh, really? I could. Uh, I've been taking the long way around. So, I think we've only got one more load of bales to come in. And then we can start um, planting. Probably canola. Now I know Auto Tractor doesn't really like trail cedars for whatever reason, so I'm going to be doing it manually. Um, I'm also, I'm, pro I'm actually going to start off with field one because I want to show you guys the green manure mod. <coughs> Seriously, this is perfect. Amazing. Twenty-four bales exactly. Um, 
The funny thing is I didn't sleep very much last night. I slept really well, but not much. Um, and I'm just feeling awesome today. Just absolutely awesome. And I'm not going to complain much. <laughs> um, but yeah. I'm going to bring this in. And then get the uh, cedar out. I know... I know I've got uh, the other John Deere's hooked up to the... Um, forage wagon. I'm going to keep that hooked up for the time... I've gone the long way again. Oh well, I'm going <coughs> to... There we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. I've got. I do have a bit of a cold at the moment. I. I was um, talking to a friend on Skype last night and uh, played a bit of Star Trek Online just to get some daily quests out of the way. And oh my God, I sounded like hell. I know I did, because I was just like talking to him about what I was doing. And I was just. Oh, I need to get this done. I'm just going straight to the thing. And getting the other thing. He was in game, and apparently now if you've been, if you've played Star Trek Online, you will know that um, the main hub for the Federation is Earth Space Dock, which is where pretty much half of your quests end up bringing you. Um, especially the five-year anniversary quest, which is what I was doing last night. I went to pick it up. And apparently I ran straight past my friend, didn't spot him at all. He saw me running past, uh, because my character's hard to miss. He's one, probably one of the tallest characters in the entire game. Um, if I had to estimate, I'd say Sieb, my character, and that is my username on all of that things now because Star Trek Online jet randomly generated that for me and I loved it. Um, Zeeb is about eight or nine feet tall <laughs> and has the tallest head I have ever seen. It is hilarious. So I've run into the new Holland there. That's kind of fine. Um, so we're going to pick up the cedar. I've come at it from a horrible angle here, haven't I? I'm going to pick up the cedar here, and we're going to get it into canola. That's barley. Just continue refilling it. There's canola. And what I'm going to do is move the chair, my chair a bit. I'll move myself in my chair. There we go. That's more comfortable. We're going to go over to field one and see directly on top of the alfalfa there. Now, if what I've been hearing is correct, and if I'm right, uh, which I hope I am, is doing this on field one, which is actually quite a large field looking at it, and I'm kind of regretting buying it now, but doing this on field one should fertilize it, which means it saves a full step, and if that's the case, then I'm going to start growing alfalfa a lot more. And probably using my free seeds to to make alfalfa to do alfalfa. Um, the downside of that is this cedar isn't. I haven't unfolded it. I've made the Ian Robson mistake. Uh, the first time Ian Robson used this cedar, he forgot to unfold it as well, and he was wondering why it wasn't working. That little wheel there, on the side, the spokes, has to be unfolded down for this cedar to work. And now we're running. Now we're, cold. we're now we're seeding. And yes, it does look like this is fertilized. That is amazing. That is a full step saved. Now this is going to be a bit of a rough seed um, going in first, the headlands. But I'll, I'll clean it up later on. Um, this map, the grass can be cultivated, so you have to be a bit careful when you're running around with a cultivator. And I believe David Oldfield was running into problems growing or fermenting silage because Enzo's next, the person who created the map, has tinkered with the growth times and the fermentation time of the silage. I don't know if he did it just on uh, the specific version David Oldfield has. 
specific map just to troll him or something. Or I don't know if it's um, a general thing that he's gone and done to the map for realism purposes, which, to be fair, this map is probably one of the most realistic in 2015 so far. I've gone and screwed myself over here. There we go. Um, what I'm tempted to do, and I'm going to wait for you guys to comment on this, um, hopefully you've done it in the previous episode where... I think it was the previous episode where I had major issues with the um, sprayer. Hopefully you'll have commented there that I should probably get something a bit smaller. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you today, in the comments, um, please leave a comment on this because I'm not going to make the decision myself. Uh, well, I will, but I'll wait until you guys have put your two cents in. Um, in the comments, let me know whether I should struggle on with the sprayer I have, or get a fertilizer pellet spreader, which would be far easier on this map. Um, because I can... Well, number one, I can show you off the calc. Or the chalk, or whatever it is. The lime, I'll call it. And number two, it's not going to be slamming into every tree on the map. Which is the problem I've been encountering with the sprayer. Um, I will keep the sprayer in my mods folder. I want to get onto big maps as well. This I count as a smaller map. The fields are really nice sizes for like 3 to 6 meter implements. Um, I still need to get the harvester out of the other fields by the way. I'll do that. Uh, possibly in the next episode, just looking at the time. I'm just going to do a bit of seeding today, and possibly the next episode as well. But I'm going to get rid of the, get the harvester out of the field in the next episode. Um, get the grass um, gathered up and given to given to. I haven't decided what to give it to yet. Um, in fact, I think I've got enough money to do this. Decided what animals we all are this season. Last season we were sheep. This season we're going to be lambs. So I'm going to buy 100 lambs. 101 lambs because uh, I checked my subscriber number just before starting. And it was 100. The 101st lamb is myself, of course. Uh, I would have done pigs, but I don't think anybody wants to be called pigs. I think these lambs also reproduce magically. So 80, 90, 100, and 1. So we now have 101 lambs. Um, which sounds like a lot, but I really don't mind, to be honest, because... Um, while the animal hut doesn't work, unfortunately, I'm going to have to get the PDA mod at some point, possibly after these couple of episodes have, have been recorded. I might record three episodes today. It depends on how I feel after doing the second one. Um, but the, the lambs are going to fatten them up, and we can sell them off to the slaughterhouse. I don't want to slaughter you guys, but that's what happens with the uh, lambs on this map how they make us the money. I think. They might magically grow into sheep, in which case I'll be amazed and kind of horrified at the number of sheep I have. Um, I'm just doing a bit of cleanup work now. So, oh, we've hit 19 minutes. Wow, this has gone fast. You know I'm in a good mood when 20 minutes does, doesn't seem like anything. And I hope you guys feel like that as well when you're watching, <coughs> watching videos or doing something in you kind of check your watch or whatever you use, the timekeeping piece, and just say, well, that's been, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, an hour and a half. Where did the time go? I've done that before for like eight hours. I was playing Command and Conquer Generals, because I am a bit of a fan of real-time strategy games, and Farming Simulator kind of is real-time strategy, it's just very slow. That must be the BGA. Um, see, there's four clamps. Yeah, that has to be the BGA in there. 
I'm just gonna, I don't even need to check that is the BGA. Um, I'm a bit of a fan of real-time strategy. I have played StarCraft in the past. Well, StarCraft 2. I played StarCraft 1 as well, just not um, even remotely competitively. Star mm, StarCraft 2 could be argued I never played competitively either. Um, did go into a tournament. Um, there was an online only thing that was streamed on Twitch um, for Gold and Silver League and Bronze League. Uh, I was in... I think Silver League at the time. Which is... Kind of, you're bad at the game, but you know how to play it, so well done to you. Um, yeah, I was in Silver League and I lost out to a couple of Gold League guys. Um, in the semi-finals of that tournament, actually. To date, it's the only tournament other than quizzes I've ever taken part in. Um, because I am the king of random knowledge. Or the queen, depending on your, your viewpoint on me. Um, yes, I have taken part in plenty of quizzes. I have... I don't know where I've put it. But I have in my room, I was tidying my room the a couple of weeks ago. And I actually found an old trophy of mine. Um, because, yeah, how most kids get trophies for doing sports. Mine were for doing quizzes. All of my trophies. Um, but not all of mine. I do have a couple that were not quiz related because I used to be in Scouts. And there's um, what's called the County Shield. The, well, the Regional Shield, as it was. Um, as it still is, I suppose. Because it's because to. Yeah. Regional Shield, and that's basically, um, it's really hard to describe. It's a competition between scouts to see which troop is the best, and um, it's based on the region of scouting in the area, so, you know, you'd have uh, probably a North Dublin region, South Dublin region, Central Dublin uh, that sort of stuff. And all the scout troops in the country take part in their own regional shields. And the top two or three teams from each region, depending on the size of the region obviously, go through to the Phoenix Challenge. Which I can't remember the old name of. I think it was the Melvin. Um, and the Phoenix Challenge is basically the national scout competition in Ireland. Um, and I've been to it. I've made it as a competitor to the Phoenix Challenge. I was, um, well, we, as a team, came, I think it was second in the regional shield and had to go up to Northern Ireland then during the summer for four days for the national competition because, um, Scouting in Ireland is united across the border. Yeah, Scouting Ireland is a united front. And, uh... Yeah, we lost one member, like, 24 hours before we were supposed to leave, so... We literally rang the entire troop. The leaders and the team members, we all were kind of making phone calls. Did I miss a bit? We were all making phone calls. I know I'm going over time, but I've, I've got to finish this story. We were all making phone calls drastically at like 5 p.m. Um, the day before we left, trying to get people to come onto the team because we were like one person short. And uh, to cut it a bit short, we never got the sixth member. And we left the following morning at... I think it was six or seven o'clock in the morning um, in a few car convoy I was in my parents car we had uh, the troop leader in one of his vehicles ahead of us and in them and ahead of them 
or behind him was his wife driving uh, his his other vehicle. Problem was one of the one of the troop leaders' vehicles had a bit of an engine problem, and by a bit of an engine problem. You know the way that when a radiator goes in a car, or any kind of vehicle, you sometimes have to stop up and fill it up with water, uh, just to make sure that you can get to your destination. And you know, you usually go maybe 10 or 20 miles, or however, it is, however far it is to the nearest garage. Um, we went, over the course of about 8 hours, 200 miles. <laughs> um, we were stopping up literally every half hour because the engine needed more water and more oil and more coolant and more everything um, but that was kind of part of the fun was just sitting by the side <laughs> of the motorway <laughs> while the engine got topped up so yeah um, I might tell you some more stories from my past I don't know I just thought that would be a funny one um, I don't even remember why I was talking about it. <laughs> yes, my mind does throw blanks sometimes. Um, in any case, I think I'll leave it there for today. Well, for this episode, not today for me, but today for you guys. Um, I was. Can I buy a cultivator, actually? Because I would like to grow some more soybeans than I have at the moment. Ooh. Mm, that's the cheapest one. Uh, I've got a modded one as well. 19,000. I can't afford it. I'm gonna leave it then. Um, I'll probably sell off some crop and then buy a cultivator. In any case, I'm gonna leave it here. Um, so I'm going to leave you by saying, I've been Rainbow Dave. You've been watching Farming Simulator 15 on Oldridge Farm. I keep opening up the course play menu because I'm stupid. Thank you very much for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all of that related nonsense that everybody on YouTube wants you to do because it is so very helpful. Um, thank you once again very much for watching. I will see you next time, and until then, stay safe. And goodbye. I'm making a mess. I'm gonna draw a smiley face. These are the kind of things that I normally do off camera is just screwing around with the, the game. I've lifted it, I've ruined it. There are the eyes. They're a bit wonky, but it'll do. Let's see if I can get a good mouth going. Let's take down the Alt H and the L. Well, that. Let's see how bad this really is. It's quite good, isn't it?